This is a picture of Zach Brown in 1992. Yes, it is really him. And look at how adorable he was. Now it's 2023 and he's fat. And according to these headlines, Fat Brown likes to get down. Dailymail.co.uk Zach Brown admits to being in the wrong place at the wrong time after being caught up in cocaine and marijuana drug bust at Palm Beach Four Seasons. TMZ.com Zach Brown, I didn't know there'd be strippers and blow. Zach Brown unwittedly ended up in a hotel room with strippers, condoms and cocaine. So say sources connected to the country singer. There is another Zach Brown who is a country singer, but how do we know that's not Fat Brown in a disguise? Have you ever seen the two of them in the same room together? No, you haven't. But the cocaine fueled strippers at the Palm Beach Hotel isn't the only thing Fat Brown has fucked because McLaren have been getting progressively more shit every single season. In 2020, they finished third in the World Championship. That sounds decent, but part of that is because the FIA introduced a technical directive that crippled the Ferrari engines. You, you remember the engine that Lewis Hamilton couldn't get past in Monza, even with the DRS wide open? Yeah, apparently those those engines weren't completely legal. So for 2020, the FIA introduced this technical bollocks, which meant that Ferrari couldn't cheat anymore. And that plunged them into the depths of hell, otherwise known as the back of the grid. They even got overtaken by a customer team on pace, Alfa Romeo. That's embarrassing. Imagine doing such a bad job, you get overtaken by a customer team. <laughs> And then there was the Racing Point, or the pink Mercedes. Because it was such a rip-off of the regime, the FIA gave them a €400,000 fine and a 15-point deduction in the World Championship. Then you add the window liquor into the equation, and that's how McLaren finished third in the championship, despite having a car that was kind of shit. Then, in 2021, they finished fourth in the World Championship. Slightly worse, even though the MCL 35M occasionally ripped. Lando Norris also almost got pole position in Imola and was only 0.04 seconds away. He got a podium at the Monaco Grand Prix and in Russia, he was fighting Lewis Hamilton for the win. And he would have won that race if he didn't get stuck up his own arse. The team came on the radio and said, Oi dickhead, it's about to piss it down. What about intermediate tyres? And he said, shut up. His actual words. Lando, what do you think about it, Inter? What do you think about it, in Inter? No! Track very slippery from here to turn 10. Lots of cars going off. Yeah, shut up! And then what happened? It started pissing down. Lando Norris stayed out on dry tyres. Even though the track was wetter than Lance Stroll's chin, he spun off and ended up finishing seventh. <laughs> And what made that even worse is that would have been McLaren's second win in a row because the race before Russia at the Italian Grand Prix, McLaren got a 1-2 finish. Yeah, part of that was because Hamilton and Verstappen were being Hamilton and Verstappen. But still, the MCL 35M occasionally ripped. So even though they scored 73 more points in 2021 than they did in 2020, they still finished fourth in the championship because Ferrari had managed to pull themselves out of the depths of hell mainly by firing Charles Manson, because every single time he got behind the wheel, he spun the car. But to be fair, the Beatles were telling him to do it. And if you don't get that reference, you're an ignorant slot. Then in 2022, I'm sorry, I'm sweating like a nonce. It's 45 degrees inside the nerve center and I, I'm a bit clammy. In 2022, McLaren finished fifth in the World Championship. Slightly worse again, but this time the problem was Daniel Ricciardo. In fact, of the 159 points they did score that season, Ricardo only scored 37 of them, while Lando Norris scored 122. Now I'm panicking. Yeah, Don't panic. No, I am, because I'm going to lose my job. But was you panicking when you was here to meet the child? Nuts. So they sacked him, but they did it in a really stupid way. According to reports, McLaren paid Ricardo $18 million to fuck off. I'm sorry. That seems backwards. They offered him $18 million to sit at home, finger in his ass. Damn good deal. But they weren't finished yet, because then McLaren kicked off one of the biggest Twitter shitstorms in Formula One history. Remember when Alpine tweeted that Oscar Piastri was going to be driving for them in 2023, and then Piastri clapped back and said, no, I'm not going to be driving for those baguette-eating bastards. His words. That started a high-octane legal war between Alpine, McLaren, and Piastri. 
Months later, a court decided that Alpine were indeed baguette eating bastards and they lost the case. But not only did they lose the case, they were forced to pay all of McLaren's legal fees, which were approximately $600,000. Tell them to bring me my money. So, as you can imagine, Piastri and McLaren were feeling a bit smug. Until they showed up to the first race of the 2023 season in Bahrain. They hit the track in the MCL 60 and it did not rip. Not even slightly. Lando Norris finished last and Piastri retired with a technical problem. So, once again, for the fourth season in a row, they took another step back and McLaren fans were in for a whole season of pain. No question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. A few moments later. Lando Norris leads the British Grand Prix from Max Verstappen and Oscar Piastri. You can hear the roar. Oh, Britannia, Britannia, Britannia. Now, that wasn't some crazy fluke. McLaren are genuinely the second fastest car on the grid. Even though they started the season with an actual tractor, over the past few races, they've introduced hella upgrades. Every single race, they've been making the car less and less shit. And now the MCL 60 does rip. Are you listening, Mercedes? You have now been outdeveloped by a second customer team. <laughs> Because not only did Lando Norris slap Max Verstappen off the line and take the lead of the race before Verstappen got bored and overtook him like it was nothing, after both McLarens got screwed by a late safety car, Lando Norris had Puis Hamilton right behind him on medium tyres. Lap after lap, Puis was all over him. He tried slinging it around the outside, slinging it down the inside, and even though he was on the better tyres, he couldn't get past. So McLaren really have pulled themselves out of the depths of hell and Toto Wolff has started cutting himself. Now it's time for the news. I am literally about to burst into flames. Daniel Ricciardo is back, and this announcement shocked the Formula One paddock. Not really. Because Red Bull said they were going to give Nick De Vries until the summer break to get his shit together, but as it's been proved in the past, they are a bunch of filthy liars. So they've sacked him two races before they said they were gonna, and replaced him with Daniel Ricciardo. Remember the guy from a minute ago who got 18 million to sit at home knuckle deep in his girlfriend? Yeah, he's coming back now to drive the slowest car on the grid. Which seems kind of silly, but people have started speculating that what Red Bull are really doing is trying to find a replacement for Sergio Perez. Sneaky! Are they really that desperate to get rid of Perez? I know he's doing a terrible job, but here's something to think about. Why do they even need a second driver? Max Verstappen currently has enough points to be leading the Constructors' Championship by himself. Yes, that is the level. So Red Bull can afford to do whatever they want with that second seat. They could put the window liquor in the second seat. They could bring Nicholas Latifi out of retirement. Oh my God, right. Forget everything I just said in this video. There has been some extraordinary news. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nick I, I almost forgot about this. Nicholas Latifi has appeared through the mist. We have received a communication from the king and it's kind of weird. It's a statement explaining his next career move. Can you guess what his next career move is? Let's go through his career to date. So he was the 2021 Formula One world champion. Then he flew a hot air balloon into the World Trade Center. Then he was the leader of the Ukrainian defensive. And now he's about to plunge the world into a financial crisis because he's going to the London Business School to study an MBA degree, which stands for Master of Business Administration. Fuck yes. That's right. Nicholas Latifi is now a businessman. We're talking streamlining efficiency, private equity for days, SMP 500 up my twat, crypto pyramid schemes, hyper inflation. You want to buy a pint of milk? You want to buy a loaf of bread? Well, get ready to push a wheelbarrow full of money to the grocery store because Nicholas Latifi is now in charge of all things business. We're down over 16%. 
percent now down 21 percent 166 in the blink of an eye 43 percent what in the world is happening on wall street it was the worst day on wall street since the crash of 1987 from the financial capital of the world we're back in business